Woo! Woo! Three houses. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we introduce ourselves? Um, I am Kirby Master, um, and we have Claris. Hi! Other runner, and we have Aeon Frodo, another runner who is on commentary with us. Uh, hey, everyone. It's been a while. Yeah. We've been like stressing out about this bid war this entire time, but I'm guessing the <laughs> donation's been closed. All right. Are you ready for me to uh, check out? Please tell me it's close. That, uh, Please tell me it's close. <laughs> bid war. So, which route are we running? Looks like it is going to be Black Eagles. Yes! 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 yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And all right. So yeah, you introduced. I'll go ahead and just introduce this game really quickly. This is the most recent Fire Emblem game that was released about two years ago. Um, it features three different houses, and you can pick which of the houses to tag along with: Blue Lions, Black Eagles, or Golden Deer. We're going with the Bla Black Eagles route. Thank you very much for all your donations and. This bid war was honestly, one, both the most stressful thing ever and also the most amazing thing ever, because holy crap, that is a crap ton of donations <laughs> for a good cause. Like, whole, you, you, you all blew it out of the park. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, like... like, we appreciate every single donation that makes this like the most intense bid war I've ever seen. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, without further ado, um, <laughs> I guess if we don't have much else to say, we can get ready to start and get the name incentives ready. Um, so, I get. I think we plan on starting time after we name our characters. Yes. So I'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and get ready for that. So, uh, yeah. Can we get the names? Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Violet's name is. Refresh. Gonna be Kittymon. I'm taking that. <laughs> uh, yeah, stop two. So what's second place? Second place is Mobileth. Mobileth. Okay, so okay. that's uh that's capital M and the rest isn't capitalized, correct? Correct. correct. So Mobileth. Um apparently so like this was a donation that the French community was pushing for. It's apparently a pun on the word scooter in French. So it kind of sounds like mobile, so I'm guessing that's what it's supposed to sound like. But either way, it's kind of amusing. Okay. So shout out to the French community. Okay, uh, I'm on the is mobile with correct yes no screen. So. Uh, same here. Okay. All right. So um, someone give us a countdown. Yeah. Well, do you want me to give a countdown? Yes. Yeah. That'd okay. be awesome. Sure. All right. Three, two, one, and go. So welcome to Farm Free Houses, and this is the Black Eagles route. So immediately they're going to select month 11, and that's because Black Eagles actually don't go through month 11 twice, but they do go through month um, 12 twice. So that's one of the. We don't want to celebrate her birthday. Yeah, yes. every other route you would pick month 12, but this route specifically you do 11. Also, yeah, as said, we're going to be thrown straight into the prologue. Man. Yeah, so first things first, um, we're going to actually talk to Edelgard here. Um, this is so that we can increase support points with her. Uh, we actually need to get to at least C plus support with her by the end of the run. Uh, by, sorry, sorry, by month 11, um, which is uh, February of um, next year. So another thing too is um, this is a strategy RPG. And um, our first objective here is to defeat the boss. And um, there's a lot of um, maps that have the defeat boss objective. So the boss here has this um, command signal on it. And um, that means that's the person's boss and we need to beat the boss. Right, time for our first levels. First level up, let's go. Strength. Strength. Both of you we got both strength. got strength. Good start. Yeah, I, it was strength, magic, luck, charm. <laughs> so. uh, I got I got HP, strength, charm. So we both got strength, and that's the main stat. So yeah, every level up you gain, um, every stat has a chance of gain, of going up depending on the character. Violet has a forty five percent chance to grow in each stat for the most part, and the most important stat we're looking for is strength, which is a forty five percent chance. By far the most important stat. All the other stats are nice to gain, but strength is by far the one we're looking for. 
and both of us getting strength out of the the prologue is a very nice sign. Yes, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, so now... now Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so now we're after we saved um, our three house lords, we're going right into the monastery where we suddenly become a teacher to um, these lucky students, or unlucky when you think about it. But we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> this is basically a tutorial segment of like how to run around the monastery, how to do quests, and so on. Yeah. Right now, we need to go talk to the three house lords as kind of a tutorial quest. So we're just going to go run around and talk to them. I, I, I hope you've had a chance to. I'm going to manipulate the camera to reduce lag because this game is very laggy. That's for the most important part of the game right here. Ah, uh, yes. I, I, have you met the folks? Uh, also, before they started the run, uh, they had to uh, load up the games and load up the monastery to make sure that the, they don't get thawed. Did you um, catch that, Claris? You know his name? Oh, oh no, I did. Ah! <laughs> I, I said no, I said no, I have to go. Oh, oh no. I lost so much time there. Uh, oh, wait, I thought you meant you didn't talk to Fernand von Iron. No, oh, no, no. No, <laughs> no um, that's happened to me a few times where. Um, it's really easy to do that. Yeah, or the game just drops your import, one or the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really easy I, I to make like, a mistake. I was too busy basking for an Ayer's glory to realize which option I needed to choose there. He is very glorious, a very glorious man. Could you repeat his name? I forgot his name. Ferdinand. Kitty Von Ayer? Yeah, yeah, that was Kitty, it. Yeah, Kitty Von Ayer, yeah, that works. Oh yeah, so this game also runs on the calendar. We see the dates and all that, but we only really we go we only have one free day, and that's our free day to do stuff. Most of the time we'll be skipping the free days. But oh, okay, we got our outfits. So Kirby is dancer Violet, Professor, and Clarice is uh, evening wear Violet. I assume with glasses. That's very important to wear the glasses. I'm going glassless, even though because I'm already wearing glasses in real life. Cutscene, Claris. Cutscene. Cutscene. Thank you, thank you. Because I would have forgotten. Cutscene. Cutscene. <laughs> cutscene. 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 I remembered. Cutscene. So, cutscene. <laughs> so the most important thing about not skipping some of these cutscenes is to increase support points of Edelgard. It's um, so there's some opportunities where we can actually not skip cutscenes and get quick support points with, with her. Oh, so this first map is a doozy. So we don't have one of our um, primary tools here, which is Divine Pulse. So hopefully the battle goes well. <laughs> um, it's the Black Eagles yeah. version of this battle, though, is mostly pretty smooth, though, um, compared to um, some other routes like um, Golden Deer. Stay focused. And no good stats in second level, unfortunately. I got all, everything, most of that's besides strength, which is good, but not strength. Yeah, Kirby got a very defensive level up, which is not a bad thing, necessarily, but we still want more strength. Put me in there. I will prevail. This map is really difficult because you're kind of constantly fighting the lag. This map is specifically really laggy, so you have to be really careful with your inputs. Also, I like how we just deployed Casper so he can just get sacked. <laughs> By Dimitri. Okay, no strength second. Uh, I got two strengths so far. Yeah, I've only have one. So combat art quad. Combat art quad. Grass strike, grass strike. Okay, uh good, I got uh I'm at 15 strength now. Same. I think we I got some like two of every stat at this point, which is kind of expected because most of pilot stats are basically a coin flip. Yeah, our goal is to route this map. You have to just kill everyone. Um, this is a mock battle, so no one actually dies. 
And our goal is to try to get as much experience on Violet as possible, because we want her to let, hit level 10 by chapter 2. Ideally. Yes. If not, it's not the end of the world, but yeah. Uh, that's going to require some luck, though, because there's some enemies in the uh, practice foul coming up where you need to not get a crit on them. Yeah, that's that, that's really important. Uh, yeah. I'm not too familiar with the... Uh, this is a really recent strat, by the way, to get to level 10, because this, that was only a, a Golden Deer exclusive thing, but now it's in, like, every route except um, Blue Lines, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this, this route change was found like last week, basically. Yeah. By Tasmania Jones, who is a recent, who is a runner who kind of came into the community recently with no other, no past speedrunning experience, but he's been kind of just going in with all the route changes. Yeah. He found and the maker glitch yeah. in the game where you access the calendar from. The <laughs> 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 yeah. You, you love those times when speedrunners completely overlook very intended features at save time for like a few years. Those are the best. Oh yeah, so now we're going to explore the monastery and try to talk to the hardest NPC to talk to, which is your father. Just like the game, he's really hard to talk to. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to get some landmarks here. The most important ones that we're going to get here is the Greenhouse Landmark, which is going to help us next next month. And uh, we have to go through the uh, objectives of the month, so we have to talk to um, Aelagard and then talk to it. Um, then we can find our father's lost thing. So we'll be approaching the first um, week of Instructs, and every month in the game, the, this game kind of runs on a calendar system, and every month has a set number of Instruct weeks, where characters will learn a specific number of, gain a specific number of skill points per skill that you set them to. And that's going to be important for routing. Yeah, so um, our house lords, um, we had to set them to a certain um, thing. Um, we set our goals to axe and armor initially for Elagard. Oh, wow, Clara's got really lucky. Yeah, I got Linhart. Uh, she got Linhart. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, got Petra. Yeah. And yeah, and after you set your goals, depending on the student you get, it's random. Um, usually it's like a two out of eight chance that you um, get the student you, you, students you desire. And um, we're going to explain that soon, but yeah. Basically, Clara's is going to save roughly 10 seconds on me later. Yeah. <laughs> which, you know, can't be helped. That's luck. Yeah, and we mainly set Edelgard's goal to um, Axe and Armor initially because Axe is her primary weapon, and that's going to be really handy in part two. And Armor so that she has uh, learned weight minus three so that she doesn't uh, get weighed down by her weapons and armor and all sorts of things. And it allows her to increase her attack speed, which is very important. Pretty good level. Not strength, I'm, but still good. I'm not getting good levels so far. Okay, we're intentionally trying to get a little... Too, we're intentionally trying to not one-round some of the enemies so we can get some chip experience so we can hit level 10 by the end of this grinding map. This is basically a tutorial map where the game is like, hey, you can do practice battles and grind. All right. There. Okay. Okay, yeah. Both of you good. Good thank, you, thank you, Craig. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Yeah. And that's I'm at oh strength. my god, I'm at 18 strength, 11 defense. <laughs> excuse me? That's very good. Oh, excuse me? 11 defense? Yes. I'm at, I'm, okay, I'm at 18 strength too, so I, mean, Kirby, I think have... we're both good on strength. Yeah. You and have... 10 defense. Yeah, 10 defense. Yeah, I was okay. going to point that out, but cool. I guess you spoiled it. <laughs> 11 defense, wow. Okay. <laughs> that so the Bilas defense growth is thirty five percent. So you have roughly a one third of a chance of gaining a point of defense. And Clara's got five defense levels out of nine, which is really lucky. Yeah. I also got four, which is also pretty lucky, above average. Yeah. So yeah, our Bilas are looking pretty good so far. So that's good because it would kind of suck if one of us fell behind just from a stat screwed Bilas. Class in the thief Although, at the end of the month. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget, like my run last night, I had to hit. Oh, it's so easy to forget the simplest of things. Yeah, this I think is what... the one fourth seminar in the game where you kind of learn two specific sets of skills on all your students, and we're gonna pick Manuela because we can we want to hit C Sword so we can become a thief later, and Faith so we can have Linhart learn Warp later on. Okay. 
Yeah, if you want. So the thief is an intermediate level class, and you can't certify as an interme intermediate level class until you're level 10, which is why it was important for us to hit level 10 at this point. Yes. Uh, thief will give us five move instead of four, which is super important for this chapter right here. And it also has unrestricted movement for, through forests, meaning no movement penalty through forests, which is very important in a few chapters. Yeah. Anyway, so this map is called Red Canyon Dominance, but um, there's not going to be quite a lot of dominance happening, except um, a lot of students are going to die. So if you have a favorite student, uh, most of them are going to die on this map. Um, we're not a very good teacher, so um, yeah, the less students that are um, Alive, which is why we play on classic mode. Um, the less uh, um, that um, end of week tutoring affects our experience, and each like little fixed skill they learn is like just waste time. So the less students we have, the less time waste we have, and also the skills are important to learn. So, um, so this strat is specifically designed around killing off our students as quickly as possible. Yes. <laughs> so. We're manipulating all of our students with auto battle to get on the bridge so they're surrounded by enemies and die really quickly. The only students we're keeping alive at this point are Edelgard and Linhart. Okay, 12 defense out of this chapter. Bernadetta and Caspar are alive! Okay. How did Bernadetta and Caspar survive? <laughs> oh, did you have to take yeah. an extra turn? I, I took an extra sure. turn, yeah. Uh, wow. I, I have never cut had scene, to take cut an scene, extra cut turn. Cutscene, 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 cutscene. And bomb option too. Cutscene, 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 cutscene. Cutscene, cutscene. Bomb option, bomb option, the cutscene. Bottom option, bottom option, cutscene. That's going to be half our commentary for early game. Cutscene, cutscene. Okay, I remembered. I remembered. You both did it. Congrats. <laughs> I'm so proud of us. Like, there are backups for missing cutscenes, but generally speaking, the support routing is pretty tight. Yeah, uh, um, the worst part is when yeah. the, you forget the backups. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't even know one of them until you told me just before the run. Mm. Yeah, and cutscene prompts where, that you gain support points with Edelgard will give her plus five support points. And we need to hit 100 support points by chapter five, I think? Uh, six. Six? Six. Yeah. yeah, so we want to hit 100 support points by then. Oh yeah, don't forget to celebrate her birthday. Yes. That goes birthday. for both of us. Yeah. Like, why would you not celebrate Aelgard's birthday? What kind of monster <laughs> are you? Because it's slow, except in this category. Yep. <laughs> this is the only exception where it's actually fast, because you gain a lot of support points to celebrate her birthday. I don't remember if it's plus four or plus five, but it's very quick, so... Right. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, that will be uh, Clarissa's final question for a little bit. Uh, Kirby will get another question. Which happy is, birthday, uh, Elgard! Yeah, happy birthday! Woo! Happy birthday. Yeah, so we had to do a force tutorial there to visit the um, Battalion Guild. And Battalions are kind of... They're basically like armies that you control, but in RPG terms, they're effectively a um, extra accessory slot, sort of. So they yeah. give you certain stat buffs, they allow you to use abilities called gambits, and we'll get into what they are later. But basically, just know that battalions are important to train up, because they can gain experience just like your characters. So yeah, this map coming up, our goal is to defeat the boss, Lonato, who is auto in the upper left corner. And this is the first and only Fog of War map in the main game. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know oh, why. Yeah. Uh, just, it's it's kind of silly. They yeah. introduce the mechanic and they don't use it like a few times. But. And it's, pr it's pretty horrible because you only have two vision, but oh well. But Lonato actually doesn't exist until like, after you take out a Dark Mage in the middle of the map. So that's going to be our priority, taking out this Dark Mage to remove the Fog. On strength five. Oh, you're not getting level yet. Never mind. Fuck, yeah. Our goal is to lure out the dark mage here so that we can strength. punch him while he's outside of the forest. Got strength. Okay, cool. So she can two uh, gravel not one other now. Yeah, P19 is pretty important for this chapter. You're at 19 strength. Yeah. I think I'm still at 18. Well, I'm at 19 now. Like, oh anyway. no, I'm at 19. Okay. I'm at one. I got a perfect level besides magic. Okay. Okay. Cool. Also, there's a difference in strats. Just to point out, um, 
Karis had to move her space away and use her bow, while uh, Kirby didn't have to because the archer moved into position. Um, and that's how we can move to the forest. Pilot missed, so it, it did take three rounds. Um, you can, like, crit Lonato, but it's a very low chance. Um, it's Obviously, it's okay to do it in, like, um, this route, but in the Golden Deer route, you really want to kill Lonato in two rounds or more. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Golden Deer, you have to get to level 15 by the end of Chapter 4. So yeah. Which is coming up. Yeah, which is... It's really tight experience routing, but yeah. it's... Yeah. <laughs> Not necessary in any other route, which is really unfortunate because... Because, yeah, yeah you, you really have to go out every way to get hit level 15 in the Golden Deer route, yeah. and... Yeah, it can be unreliable. But yeah, um, we we can we need to. So there are certain events on the calendar that we want to skip whenever we can because they take forever. But we want to celebrate do choir practice here because when you do choir practice, the game randomly selects two of your students to celebrate to do choir practice, and we only have two students left because we killed killed off everyone else. And we want to do choir practice because we get 45 support points with Edelgard, and that is very important. So don't forget, Claris, I think you're ahead of me. So uh, yeah, I already did it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Kirby has to go Here's for my an time extra loss. question. Yeah. Because mm -hmm, I got an extra lecture question, so I'm going to lose roughly 10 seconds to Happy Claris. birthday, Claude. Yeah. Uh, you need 100 support points for each level C, uh, and then... 200 total to reach C plus, so that's a quarter, almost a quarter of the total amount we need. Just that choir <laughs> practice right there. I won't so yeah, hey Aeon, would you like to explain support gambits and stride? Oh, well, stride is <laughs> yeah, stride, stride is a thing. Like it's <laughs> it's ridiculous. So you go up next to a unit and you can stride people in a diamond range um, from that unit. And basically what happens is that you get, you stride everyone in that range and that gives people five extra movement, which is absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that means you can move too, like nearly the whole map. Broken here. And it's ridiculous. So yeah, we're pretty much just going to skip half the map in one move because of stride. And you get to start, start comboing with it with other abilities. So this is just a very tame version of stride. Yeah, for reference, Thief Byleth has um, five movements. With Stride, she has 10 for one turn, so that just doubled her movements. I'm at 20 strength, 15 speed. Uh, um, I am 20, 2017. All right. Yeah. 15's. Both of us are in decent, decent shape. 15's yeah. kind of low for this chapter, but I have good defense, and that's what really matters for this next yeah, chapter. Ch so yeah, the next chapter map five. is. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, um, so chapter five. Well, in Golden Deer, we don't have to worry about it. But in this route, we do. So what happens in this map is you have to go around in a spiral into the middle because the boss is in the middle and it's a defeat boss map. So you have to go all the way around and, yeah, beat the boss. And it's incredibly, uh, it's incredibly scary because you can just lose a lot of um, HP easily. You can also get, like, Bought by some units. It's so we have yeah. plenty of vulnerabilities on hand, but we want to like try and not like waste too many turns by like, killing ourselves up. Uh, mm -hmm. An important thing about it is that there's an NPC unit named Gilbert uh, who lags way behind you. So that uh, how the enemies behave depends on basically how your good your defenses are. If you have good defense, uh, the the enemies will uh, all go after Gilbert. If you don't, they'll all go after you. Uh, so having good defense is really important to keep all those enemies away from you. <laughs> um, and I think my I defense, didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so I think my defense is good enough uh, to keep them away. Uh, pretty sure it is. Hopefully it is. Uh, so yeah, uh, this should go much smoother than it usually does. Until the boss, at least. <laughs> Yeah, so Mikon <laughs> himself isn't too much of an issue. It's just that there's a second phase to this map that's going to come up, and this is the game's first introduction to monsters, and we'll get into that when Claire's We get to there. Yeah. Yeah. 
But this chapter is one of those maps where like you can just lose so much time to it. And it's pretty much one of the gatekeepers for getting a good run going. Mm -hmm. First big gatekeeper. One thing to note, um, we want to keep using um, iron, iron Gauntlets. Gauntlets are really useful because they have the Brave effect, and the Brave effect allows you to attack twice per attack. Gauntlets are really weak, but being able to attack four times early on in the game is really valuable, and we want to keep using them to hit D Gauntlets. D Gauntlets will allow us to use um, Steel Gauntlets, which is effectively a plus eight damage buff because it has two more might than Iron Gauntlets, and you attack four times. Uh, they're also a pretty light, I believe, so... Um, yeah, they're very light. Boy. Yeah. Um, oh, so Kalaris is approaching this um, enemy with an accuracy ring, and this is what you get if you um, do this route over, like, um, Golden Deer, and yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, she got it quite easily, so that's nice. If you miss the gambit on that, um, on that it's night... It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I've never missed it on happen. a run. <laughs> I've never missed this in a run, so it's gonna happen here. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, both took care of the night easily. But, oh, um, I think Kirby's low. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> almost dead. Oh no. I'm very close to dead. So we'll, we'll see. This might be a little interesting. We'll see. So Byleth has a really handy crest called the Crest of Flames, where every time she attacks, she has a 20% chance of healing herself a bit. And I'm really hoping she activates that whenever she attacks some enemies, because it helps save a vulnerary or two, but we'll see. Yeah, um, it has like a 20 something percent of activate, is that correct? Yeah, it's 20 percent. Yeah. For it. And then there's like a 5 percent extra to prevent enemies from counter attacking you. Oh, uh, not yeah, 5 I'm gonna take extra, a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh, she has not gotten any strength this chapter, which. Oh, it's, that's a little concerning. Uh, yeah. Oh, All right, Aeon, <laughs> would you like to explain Monster Miklon? Because he is okay. very scary. So normally you fight like monsters with um, battalions and all that, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to um, try to focus on one square. Um, stay on our tile, our healing tile, which is our best friend in this fight, and um, hope for the best. Uh, <laughs> luckily, there's no enemies around Claris, but he, but the monster does have a attack down debuff, which is really annoying to deal with. The main idea behind this fight is that um, there are multiple health bars and you're intended to take it on with an army, but we're one-manning this entire time, so that's going to be really difficult to... Yeah. <laughs> you're not intended to fight amongst it with one person. Yeah. yeah. You, you're meant to fight with multiple and with multiple gambits as well, because gambits instantly break the monster's shield. Yeah, for reference, it warps your entire uh, army to the end of the level uh, once you beat Miklon, so that they can all uh, face the boss together. But we only have violence, so... Yeah, we're just one on one -ing it. <laughs> I also want to point out that unskippable cutscene with Rhea, you can actually get the Lance of Ruin if you have Sylvania party, and we do that in the Silver Snow route. Just want to point mm -hmm. that out, because it is unskippable for a reason. Yeah. Uh, most cutscenes that are unskippable are unskippable for a reason, because, like, there's an important choice you make or something, uh, at least in one potential scenario. Except for the next one we're going to encounter at the end of this chapter, which is just unskippable for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just someone joining your party. Yeah, so yeah. no reason that that should be unskippable. So we typically want to avoid monastery visits whenever possible because they're very important. They're very slow, and we only visited the monastery previously because of tutorials and stuff. But this is going to be the first time we visit the monastery because we. Get stuff out of it, basically. Yeah, like we're, so really we're going to be recruiting a useful, important. Yeah, Shamir is the main reason. She is a very useful unit. She is a sniper, which is an advanced tier class, which you can only become if you're a level twenty unit. Snipers have bow range plus one, and she also has a combat art called Curve Shot, which has three range. So Shamir can attack a unit at four range, and that is very useful in the upcoming map. And since we're going to the monastery anyways, we're effectively using this as an opportunity to make a few errands, talk to Gerald, get some gifts, and throw them on Edelgard so that we can hit the sea support with her by the end of this visit. All right, Clarence, remember to accept her support. Yes. That's mostly for myself, too. 
Yeah, we're also getting a net as well. Uh, there's this thing called mission support where we can just have uh, a unit from another house just help us out, just in one mission. So getting mission assistance is actually really important for, for our net, and we're going to explain why pretty soon. And also we're giving gifts to Edelgard because uh, we need to increase the support points and make sure that we get support. Uh, is this the day? All right. Hope you said yes to that, because if you don't say yes to that, you miss out on 20 extra support points for the next support level. So Clarice did say yes to that, fortunately. Professor. Uh, I almost forgot to go to Annette. That could have been bad. Okay. I'm finding no. a good thing I realized just now. Now I also have to change their goals. Yes, uh, goal changing. Uh, we, we do that for Edelgard and... Uh, yeah, mainly Aelogard, because she needs to learn flying. And she's already learned um, weight minus three. She learned actually by the end of Chapter 5, but we didn't have time to change it until now. Yeah. The and speed... The reason why weight minus three is important is because um, it helps your speed out, and speed is typically a really important stat in most Fire Emblem games because you need to have at least four more speed than your target in order to double attack them. I should um, also point out, sorry, um, with the lecture questions, we always are picking the wrong answer, by the way. Uh, yeah. Picking oh, yeah. the wrong answer is much faster than picking the correct one because it means like the bar doesn't fill up and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so for this map, uh, we're gonna be rallying Shamir to um, snipe the Death Knight from almost her starting position. Uh, she's gonna get hit a lot and hopefully she doesn't get killed by the Death Knight. Uh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah, the Death Knight has an 18% chance. Yeah. Death Knight has an 18% chance to crit Shamir, so. I'm guessing Clarice got a smooth fight, so... Uh, we're almost done with that fight. Yeah, done. It's not too big of a deal if you, if you get crit on the second turn, because you can burn random numbers pretty easily. But you yeah. You get a different result. But on the first turn, though, it's not that great, because you have to actually wait a turn. Okay, good. So now, now this is the unskippable cutscene for no reason. Uh, <laughs> it's important to give bad answers to them, uh, not the ones that make them like you, because making them like you costs time. <laughs> yeah, don't make oh, yeah. Satef or Flame happy, basically. <laughs> the general theme of the speedrun is to be as terrible of a teacher as possible. Yep. I got credit on the, on the second turn, but oh well. There's a really cool strat in the Blue Lions route, but <laughs> uh, fortunately we can't... If Blue Lions so. won, you, there will be a complete meme strat that's actually faster, involving using yeah. magic with a very physical unit. Yes, uh, shout out for te to Tasmania Trains for discovering that, because that is, it is quite a meme, and it's, and it's faster too. Anyway, Why is the yeah, so, mod's 10 calendar like the hardest calendar to navigate like every time? I know. Oh yeah, so um, we're flying here. We're actually going to accept a goal change to Faith and Authority, I believe. Uh, uh, we're both going to do Faith only, I think. Yeah, you just okay. say just say yes to the question she asked. My effort, <laughs> We just got Flame, by the way, um, and she's a really useful unit in the upcoming chapter. She's basically a auto-level white mage who can heal, and that's really valuable in the upcoming map. Yes. And she also has an ability, her personal skill, which reduces damage of adjacent units by two, which is going to be very important in the upcoming cutscene, map. Cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. I very nearly forgot. I, I, I was about to shout it. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was half a second away from skipping it. <laughs> You're pretty ahead of me right now, but... Chapter 7 is coming up, so yeah. that can be a huge yeah. Chapter 7 is so. a huge game changer. So in Chapter 7, you have to defeat every student on the map. And yes, this is another mock battle. Uh, it's it's a bit crazy because every time you play through this chapter, something different will happen past the first couple of turns. So you have to be ready to improvise. And usually improvising in the Fire Emblem speedrun is a bad thing. But this is like, a, like you can't avoid you it. You have no choice. You yeah. have to improvise. So, so you can easily lose like three or four minutes to this map if you're really unlucky or yeah. have a really bad byleth. Yeah, so the two big things in on this map is um, to do having being tanky and um, Ingrid uh, just, well, not, not just Ingrid, um, 
what is, who is it? Um, all the archers at the bottom of the map, at the bottom right corner of the map. Yeah, Dudu is this dark-skinned armor guy who is really tanky, and Ingrid is the pe flying Pegasus knight who will pretty much delete anyone to get back. So they're both they're very scary units. Oh yeah, Ingrid face. is pretty scary too. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's see how this chapter goes for both of us. Yeah. Yeah, Clarps is looking good. Stay focused. You know, this chapter really comes down to like knowing how the AI works, so you can take advantage of how their AI works. Like some enemies will only attack Violet and not Flame, the green-haired girl, and so on. Some enemies will try to gambit you, which is really bad because if you get gambited, you you are immobile for the next turn, and so on. And this is like the only map where we really zoom out because we need to see everything that's going on. Like you're battling two different armies here, so it's really important to be aware of what's going on. Um, should we throw it over to a quick donation? Oh, uh, yes. Clear. Clarice and I are not going to be talking much, so throw in a quick donation. Because <laughs> we're going to be focusing on this very hard. I would absolutely love to. Uh, let's see. We have $25 from Quo with the comment, Good luck, Clarice and Kirby. Save the frames, kill the... Never mind, actually. <laughs> uh... FPS Falcon donates $100 with the message, had to get in a donation while my girlfriend and I watch Claris and Kirby destroy a favorite game of ours. Best of luck to both of you and chat. Let's get more incentives, Matt. And Agro donates $100, had to donate during my favorite Switch game. Thank you to, to the staff and all the runners for everything you do every year. And speaking of incentives, right now we are trying to get the Bishy Bashy upgraded to a 100% run. Right now we're sitting at 13.5 thousand out of 20K. I know we've been pushing hard chat, but I have faith. I know we can keep this going. Anyway. Are you done with Chapter 7? Yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, Clarissa's. Uh, I'm approaching the archers right now. Yeah. Uh, but it... I had uh, Sylvain go after Claude, which uh, didn't kill uh, kill Claude, but it got him moving. Uh, so, But unfortunately, Mercedes was still alive at like, the opposite side of the map, so after I killed Claude, I had to go <laughs> way <laughs> over to yeah, Mercedes. I was... I was looking over, I was just going, is Mercedes Mercedes is Mercedes seriously going to be the last person you take out? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she, her AI is very annoying, but she likes to just not attack, like, ever. Yeah. It's very annoying. Mercedes AI is a little bit weird. Also, we just had Bob's He likes to waste day. time in every route. I just finished Chapter 7. It went pretty smoothly for me, personally. So, like, nothing, it wasn't super fast, but it, nothing bad oh, happened, basically. What's your strength? So, uh, 25. Oh, mine's 22. Yeah. Ooh, we get to talk my, about different strats here. My pilot is very strong. Yeah, we might see some different strats, because so on the upcoming map, um, 25 strength is the ideal threshold you want to hit, which is a really high threshold. You're usually not going to hit it, because we typically need 24 strength to kill an armor knight with the Sword of the Creator, which is the 1-2 range sword we've been using. But if we're at 25 strength, we can afford to hire a weaker battalion on Byleth and still kill that knight. And we want to hire a battalion called Empire Pegasus Corpse, because that is a flying battalion that gives a pretty significant hit buff. So we want to start training up that battal battalion to prep it for part two, late game. And probably for a certain boss as well, but we'll get to yes. that when we get to that. Uh, so Claris here is probably going to do the strat where you buy an extra armor slayer in order to take out the knights easily because yeah, she there's... didn't hit that 25 strength threshold on Byleth. Yeah, I guess so. There's two different strats you can use. Uh... Yeah. Oh, whoops. But the the benefit of having the extra armor slayer is that you have extra weapon uses for chapter 12. Which, yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. The armor slayer does exactly what it sounds like. It slays armored units. Yes. So. Okay. 
Okay, so this is a defeat boss map. Um, um, you're supposed to kind of fly around and rescue these villagers, but we, we're not going to bother because that's slow. So we're just going to blitz for the boss immediately. And this is one of those maps where the thief, mob the thief class's mobility is really nice because we can run through forests without losing, losing any tiles of movement. Most grounded classes have to use up one extra movement per tile of forest. Yeah, that's also relevant in Trap the Fray, which we didn't mention. But there's, there's a lot to go over. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, on the plus side, uh, 17 defense, so... That's a pretty bulky ball of... Yeah. Mine's like 13, 14. Definitely good to have good defense for uh, Chapter 12 and uh, 17, so. Yeah. Um, so, Polaris is on the upcoming month where we have the dance competition. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, the best part of the run. <laughs> yes. So, we have to pick a dancer. And um, none of our units are really great for that. We're um, spoilers, we're not going to have Flane around for too much longer. So we need to get another person. And um, who better than um, Garrick Mark's um, resident womanizer? Sylvain, um, or rather Sylvain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're getting Sylvain. Uh, he likes women. And, and um, he joins your party automatically if you are um, a girl Barlow. So, yeah, he, he just joins us. That is a huge deal. Like, that is, is a really big deal. It like, is a really female big Female is just faster in almost every route just because of Sylvain. Mm -hmm. And he is such an important unit in most routes. Uh, we're also going to finally give uh, gifts and a lost item to Elogard because uh, we, we need to increase support points with her. And that should be mm -hmm. it for uh, Monastery Exploration. I think that's that's a final monastery exploration as well. Yeah, no, should be. no. Uh, oh no no oh, there's, no no there's no no right right right. I forgot what. I right, like how we all just went like no 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 at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah no, no, like, no 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 no. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> this is Crimson Flower, the weird route, the good one, but also the different one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here comes the dance competition on Clarissa's end. Let's see who she gets. The me, for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Take all your screenshots. <laughs> Take and all Mary your Anne screenshots too. of Dimitri dancing, please. Yeah, Mary Ann's there too. So, yeah. popular characters. <laughs> all only Sylvain got votes. <laughs> <Boo>. <laughs> Hopefully you get better luck than I did. Well, I'm just about to do a lecture question on Sylvain, so I'm a bit behind. Yeah. But we'll see. Uh, also, if you miss out on the uh, on the first thing uh, with uh, Elagard, there's a backup coming up, which Clarice doesn't need to do. I don't know if Kirby needs to do that, but yeah. I shouldn't. Okay. I did the conversation in Chapter 7. Okay. So. Who's, who's Kirby going yeah. Big nuts! Big nuts! <laughs> big nuts! Big nuts! <laughs> I oh, and Mercedes. Oh, yeah. So we're going to win the dance competition no matter what, by the way. Uh, Slovenian stats are enough. For um, yeah, his charm. 14 charm. Yeah. 14 charm is the benchmark to guarantee winning. And if you recruit Sylvain in this map, he has 14 Damn. charm. Oh, oh, that sucks. <laughs> no one else got a vote but Sylvain. I know. So, Sylvain is too much of a charmer. Look at that red hair. So the next map coming up is a pretty interesting one. It's a route chapter, which means you have Stay to take Sylvain. all the enemies on the map. Stay um, and we have to take out four monsters, each with two health bars. And as we mentioned before, soloing a monster is not great, because they're meant to be taken on with the multiple units. But Point we're going to have to Point solo it. them with Byleth anyways, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really important okay. to get the gambits to hit. So uh, Clara's got them both, which is fantastic. Uh, I always have to burn our ends, which none of the runs haven't done yet. I'm on it. Although, um... Uh, I did for chapter 6, but it was really quick, so... Oh, okay. I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah. And so RN is a term called for random numbers, and when you undo a move with Divine Pulse, if you do the same thing, you're gonna get the same result. So if we get a bad result and we want to undo it, we want to do what's called burning random numbers, or burning RNs. 
So we use, do a different action with a different unit to use up the bad random numbers and then try again. Yeah, um, basically using up um, RNs is like you um, do different actions. Like you just like do a, um, you do a uh, combat art instead of a normal attack, for example, um, after you go back. And it changes the result, hopefully, of what happens. Um, sometimes you, Blaine, results hitting. don't change, and uh, that, that is very unfortunate. Oh yeah, these monsters are a little bit easier to take down, although if you do get a strength down debuff and you have low strength, uh, Flane is there to use Restore, just in case. He I is think... one... My Violence is one point short of being able to use the Energy Drop. Oh... Well, so, yeah, yeah, Clarice does have a decision to make regarding with the energy job. I don't think Kirby needs to make uh, that decision at all. Uh, no, I don't have a decision. Oh, oh, you don't? Okay, never mind. Yeah, I don't have enough to be able to use it with Violet. Uh, yeah. I'm one point short. And oh, that's that's enough for Edelgard, but but it's not enough for Kronia. Like, yes, uh, when you speak about Kronia, <laughs> Kronia is Kronia probably is the hardest e boss in part one. Yeah. <laughs> to do fast, so... Uh, Kronia is standing on the tile that gives her not only extra defense, but she or extra avoid, and she's already a pretty fast boss already. So good luck doubling her. That won't ev ever happen. <laughs> 25, 15. Or an energy drop is just enough. So I'm going to be saving time on Claris, because um, I actually have enough, enough strength to one-shot Kronia with the energy drop. Well, hey, you never know. I may get the lucky crit. You, you, you might get a crit. Yeah. That's true. There, there is a critical chance on Kranya, but it's... Um, so basically, 20%. we, we kind of need to do some math. Um, so we want to one-shot Kranya with Ruptured Heaven. And Ruptured Heaven is a really useful combat art with high accuracy that um, uses Byleth's magic stat as part of the calculation. So it buffs her... So basically, 30% of your magic is how much extra damage you deal with Ruptured Heaven. So there's a bunch of benchmarks that we had to memorize, such as, like, I think, let's say, 28 strength, 10 magic would work, 27 strength, 14 magic would work, and so on. So right now, like, I'm too short of a benchmark to one-shot her, but the energy drop, which is a plus two strength stat booster, will be enough for me to one-shot her. Claris is, Claris is too short of that, so she, the energy drop will not help her. So she has to do, if she does not get a lucky crit, which is triple damage, then she has to go for a safety two-turn strat on her, which costs a chunk of time. Stay focused. I will prevail. You save me. Let us yeah, Kranya's coming up, so... <laughs> yes, Kranya's yeah. coming up. And even, even though like, I'm in a good spot to one-shot her, we still have shaky uh, hit rates. Um, Claris did not one-shot Kranya, unfortunate. No crits. Well, I, I at least didn't miss, so that's yes, a good thing. Yes, that's very and important. Missing is very bad, yes. yeah. I think, yeah, I think I you usually have like 70 displayed hits, which is yeah. actually 80%. Yeah, I actually missed her in my PB. And I was like, are you serious? I have 31 strength on this Barleth. <laughs> <So laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't very happy. Uh, so what we're going to do here with Clarice is she's going to warp up um, Sylvain, so she, he, he's not impeded by the forest. Oh, and, um, I did that wrong, crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have to move. Um, you have to, yeah move Flane up later, and so that Aelogard gets the stride on Flane, as well as Byleth. Yeah, I yeah. accidentally positioning, first. Yeah, positioning is very important when um, you don't get the one shot on Kronia. Alright, oh, well. let's see if Kirby gets one shot. Good. And he did. Yep. Yep. So... Unlike um, Claris, he gets to keep his stride effect, so he doesn't need to use stride twice. So all he needs to do is move Barleth, move Sylvain, dance on Barleth, and then, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get an extra level uh, next chapter as well. Yes, uh, on uh, Linhart. Yeah. Because uh, I had to and use in a speed gear. run, you do not want level ups on units that, that aren't carrying. Yeah. Because level ups cost time. Like... And also, it's literally pointless because uh, Linhart's going to get all level to 20 like a couple chapters from now. So mm -hmm. he just gets... It's just a time loss. Yeah, he gets all from 2 to 20 instead of 1 to 20. Like, also, uh, um, make sure you do not skip to the end of the month. Just 20 second, 20 second. Go to the 20 second. 
Awesome. Yep. Okay. We got the cease plus support on Aelogard. That means, yeah, go to the 22nd. Do not go, go to, to the, the 29th. 22nd. Go to the 22nd. I, I know this is a leap year, but we got to go to the 22nd. Okay. Clarice is going to the mean stats on Barlaf, so her Barlaf is very good. Uh, meme stats is like, oh, you, you need your stats need to go up to the base on um, in life. Yeah, when you become a new, when you become certified as a class, if your stats are lower than the class's base stats, then you gain a stat bonus, which is normally good, but in the speedrun, it's time loss. All right, so this is our last exploration um, in the Black Eagles route, and basically is to talk to Aelogar because we have a very important route split that we need to access. So in order to access this route split. We had to um, make sure she's at C plus support and we make sure we go with her to the um, to this special cutscene event, which is unskippable because it's um, it's a big deal. Um, spoilers: she's about to become the emperor. It's a very big moment for her. Um, and the first thing she does is fire the prime minister. So, well done. <laughs> Uh, Dad and Von Iyer right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dad Von Iyer. Oh, hi, Edelgard. <laughs> yeah, the nice visual glitch there. Where... Oh. oh, you got the visual glitch? Yeah. I just ta started talking to her. So you're a bit you're a bit ahead of me, but not by a huge amount. Yeah, you caught up a good amount on uh, chapter Kranya. 10 for understandable reasons. <laughs> it's, it's Kranya. It's Kranya. Yeah, but that's just the first part of the thing we have to do for the uh, route split here. Uh, it's coming up um, at the end of this chapter. So, um, yeah, once that's um, done, yeah. So something to note is that Byleth got upgraded to the Enlightened One class, which is exclusive to Byleth. Um, it's a really useful class that we get for free because it has six movements and pretty nice stat buffs with plus two strength. And most notably, she has Sword Fair, which is really useful because Sword Fair is basically plus five damage if you use a sword. And she, her personal ability got upgraded, so she just gets an extra plus two damage for free. And her Sword of the Creator got upgraded to the Sublime Creator Sword. So the Sword of the Creator was originally seven mites, but now her upgraded sword is 15 mites. So she effectively got like a 15 to 20 damage boost or whatever with swords. Yeah, plus a which is totally ridiculous. arbitrary uh, plus two damage boost she gets from her upgraded personal also skill. Stone. But yeah, we we also threw uh, Linhart in front. He's he's all right. We actually equipped these um, heal tomes so he doesn't die. Yeah, uh, you put heal because uh, other weapons would weigh him down to make him get doubled. But with the equip, he only gets hit once. And here's the extra level I would not have gotten uh, if the previous chapter went well. But you know, oh well. All right. I was yep, about to so, say I'm at 27 strike, but yeah, this is the one route where that doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Not all the other routes here that matter, yeah. Anyway, so Clarice is coming up to the decision to um, either go to the um, so Aelogard route or the Church of Soros route. And we're obviously going to pick um, Aelogard because that won the bid war. Psych, I'm going to do Silver Snow! <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, Claris is now on the Crimson Flower route officially. I like how I saved at the prologue uh, because I was going to try to get into the habit of actually saving this run and then I haven't saved since. <laughs> I've saved like oh, three times. Like you have the auto save, so like saving isn't strictly necessary, uh, but still. All right, Congrats we're both on, on the Crimson Flower choice. route. Yep, we're both on the Crimson Flower route officially. We've sided with Edelgard. We're good. Yeah, so you Anonymous, get this, like... Anonymous would like to know with a $2,000 donation that Edelgard did. Yep, this is a map coming up that is a little bit long because we pretty much have to wait until turn 12 for the final boss to appear. Um, you're supposed to take out all the commanders, but then you can just also wait until turn 12 for Rhea, the boss, to, to show up. So we're pretty much going to be killing some units that would go after Edelgard, try to keep Byleth alive, and so, so on. So this isn't. A, so without further ado, we can go ahead and squeeze in a few donations during this map. Yeah. Yeah. 
nothing much going to happen. Fantastic. Uh, looking at this, it looks like we may have Stay something. Focused. Imposter. Will Three different donations have been all claiming to be from Ferdinand von Eyer. <laughs> <laughs> One each in 200 50 and $25. <laughs> and they all say, I am Ferdinand Von Eyer. How about Kitty Von Eyer? Can we see some donations from Kitty Von Eyer? Thank you for the donations. Feel free to keep going. Absolute. Uh, up, Finn, and uh, I'll warn you, this is me talking. Donated two hundred fifty dollars and says, "Cutscene, cutscene, cutscene, cutscene." <laughs> My kitty mon has twenty defense. Just FYI. <laughs> Ada donates twenty five dollars with the comment, "My girlfriend and I have been watching all week, but our favorite run have been on late and we keep falling asleep." Donating for this exciting Fire Emblem race to motivate myself to stay up. She's already out like a light, though. Maybe she'll hear this when we watch the replay. Let me know when you kill Rhea. I'm curious to know how far behind I am. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm almost there. Yeah, yeah. she's on the tile. I'm about, I just killed Zedith. Oh, a few turns behind. Right and, yep. and Claris is done with part one, so this game oh. is in two parts. The uh, spy prayer sword broke. I'm blind oh. killer. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't matter at that point. <laughs> well, I mean, if it had only one use left and I was wrong about actually killing her, then that could have been bad, you know? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So five years just passed, by the way, in the time skip. Yes. So, like, all the story up to this point has basically been, like, learning about the world building, learning about yourself, learning about the students, training up your students, and so on. And at this point, now we're actually at war, so this is where things get real. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Elagard happened to also um, start a war against the church. She, she just kind of <laughs> started a war, yeah, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> So one thing to note, um, we've been keeping Edelgard at level one this entire time and focusing her skills on axe rank, flying rank, and armored rank. And the reason for that is that she's going to actually start carrying the rest of the run. So as we mentioned before, um, how certifications work is that if you become certified as a class, your stats will go up to the base stats of that class. Edelgard just became the armored lord as a level one unit. So her HP stat just went up to 38 as a level one unit. Her strength stat went up to 17 as a level one unit. You get where I'm going with this. And then, in normal difficulty only, every unit below level 20 gets auto-leveled up to level 20. So Edelgard not only got really broken stats as a level 1 unit, but she also gained 19 off-screen level ups. She's very broken. Her average strength at this point as a Wyvern is like roughly 29-30, which is how much strength you'd expect from a level 30 unit, but she's level 20. Okay, no stat boost, so... Uh, that means her speed's decent. Yeah. Um, if you get a stat <laughs> boost, right. it, nice it, it, it doesn't look good. <laughs> and you right. absolutely need speed on Aelogard as well. We I have many stories about how many Aelogards <laughs> have gone, <laughs> have gone uh, space screwed on my end. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, unfortunately, Thanks, we won't see her stats until the next chapter because she won't be yes. getting any levels yet. Yeah, so first map, we're going to be using Yuretsa, who just joined us. Um, he is He's a really good unit with very strong base stats, and he has a lant, really powerful lance, a mount, to be very mobile, and he can use magic. And he has sword breaker, which gives him extra hit against swords. And that's going to be really valuable in the map, first map of part two, because the boss we need to kill is a sword user, and she's kind of dodgy. So Yuritsa will have 100 hit on her. And thankfully, Yuritsa will eat all the experience that he gets from her and not level up, which is good, because we don't want level ups. Yeah. So it works out really well, basically. And um, yeah, um, 
So um, I should mention um, Dirk used to say your rates though. <laughs> no, he, he's a very important part of the run, you know? He's had such he's high really stats. Important. Uh, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he is. I mean, he can he can learn retribution, you know. That's really good ability. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we can squeeze in while we navigate this calendar. We can squeeze in a quick donation or two yeah. for the next map. Ooh, I would gonna, love, these maps are gonna blaze by. I would love nothing more. Uh, Ardizzo donates two hundred fifty dollars and says, "Hunting by daybreak, or like." Ferdinand von Eyer. <laughs> Nuclear Reaction donates $50 oh, hey, for Kitty von Eyer and my favorite cat posting mod. Much love for <laughs> Kirby Master from the squad. Chat, show me your favorite uh, cat emote. Post your favorite cat emotes, please. Shout out to Nuclear Reaction. She's a pretty awesome streamer who has an awesome community. And Anonymous donates $100 and says, Fly, Eagles, fly. Okay, here's right. the truth. Finding out Eligard's stats. Yes. Oh, boy. Uh, we're also fighting Claude, just to point that out. Um. So are we, are we going to kill him or spare him? Should we kill him or spare him? Oh, <laughs> Oh, want. oh god. <laughs> Chat will be kind of angry if we killed him. But he did get a lot of donations for us. A lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. So What's first thing we're gonna do is um you know, just you, you know units around Bala. I mean everyone's gonna be okay, right? Oh whoops. Oh oh no, Let's not Teresa. He, he must have gone dark spike as everyone does on him when he's a death knight. Dark Spikes still has more enemy, 18. even as a player unit. 34 strength? Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, I did get the energy drop. I don't have drop, the energy drop. So. What's the point? Yeah, I don't have the energy drop, so... Let's see how mine turns out. Okay. Alright, let's see yeah, what Yeah, Yurza dying does. is intentional. Just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of intentional. Yeah. Uh, Claris is at Claude, by the way, so let's see what happens. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Okay, so I just got 33 strength with the level up, so pretty good. But yeah, we have an ability called Raging Storm, by the way. The Edelgard has her own weapon called Amir, and it has a combat art specific to her called Raging Storm. It's a very powerful combat art. Lots of hit, lots of crit, lots of might. Um, the kicker, you can move again after you use it. Okay. Very broken. Oh, you chose the wrong option. <laughs> oh, I autopiloted that crap. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I just mashed. Oh yeah. By the way, we we recruited Lucifia. By the way, if um if no one knows, uh, we actually recruited her. She, um, yeah. she is not dead. <laughs> yeah. So to go into Raging Storm a bit more. So the Amir has twenty weapon uses, and the Amir is really broken because you just keep you can just move again and again and again. But the limitation is that it takes up four uses of the Amir. So you have five uses of Raging Storm before the Amir breaks. And this is kind of what make, makes this route really stand out from the other routes. Especially in the upcoming map. Because this map is just going to go like that. Professor. Assuming things go smoothly. So yeah, we, we both used one Raging Storm at this point. We will be using Raging, Raging Storm three more times in this map. So that's going to be exciting. Okay. I think we can throw in a quick donation. Next map will be coming up soon, but well, we it, have time for a quick yeah, donation. Yeah, one, one uh, donation. Class is almost there, though. I can absolutely. Wolf donates $100 with a comment, Fire Emblem for the GBA was one of the first video games I ever played. Fire Emblem, this day, is still my favorite video game series. And it's been there for me through the highs and lows of my life. Thought this would be a perfect time to donate. Good luck, runners. Alright, so this map here is um, 
we just go down and uh, kill all the bosses. Uh, there are a lot of replacement bosses, or oh, well, a bunch of replacement bosses, because we got Shamir, so this can be a replacement for Shamir that has like five range or something ridiculous like that. <laughs> but we were just range stopping that one. Yeah, she has but, like yeah. bow range plus one and bow range plus two or something. <laughs> I just wanted to point out how ridiculous that archer is. Uh, oh no! Oh, um, yeah, Karis is gonna have to burn our yeah. end here. Okay, I knew, I knew it. <laughs> I was like, right, I knew where you were, and when you said, oh no, I'm like, you got critted by Seth. Oh no, the wrong weapon. Oh no, that's a lot of time lost. Seth has a pretty high chance of critting Edelgard, so that can be really scary. That's the main thing that can go wrong in this map. Yeah, which happened to Clarice, unfortunately. Clarice has a lot of strength on Edelgard. Like, she's got um, enough to take out um, Eloise. So... Should be a very I'm simple still at affair. 34. Yeah, I'm at 38. Come on, 35. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kirby just made it. Yeah, barely. You need 35 in order to one round him with the Brave Axe. Uh, yeah, if you don't, you need to heal with Linhart, otherwise, I either got one I'm at 19 speed. Mm. Oh, I haven't paid enough attention to my speed. I hope it's okay. Well, I, I knew my speed was iffy because I didn't quadruple Eloise. <laughs> Which is a bit of a red flag. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the gap has closed a little bit in the race now. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. So anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of luck involved. Yeah, and especially... part two is mostly consistent, but yeah. The big thing yeah. I'm worried about is Shamir's strength at this point. <laughs> uh, being able to actually break the armor <laughs> next chapter. Yeah, so this ma next map is really interesting. So this is another defeat all commanders map, and we have to take out five commanders scattered around the map. So this is more than just a LOL, just stride, dance, and kill the boss kind of map, because we have to take out five bosses. And we also kind of have a side objective to make, because we want Raging Storm. We want to use Raging Storm a lot. And that means we need a way to repair the Amir. And that requires a Garthium. So there's going to be some robots that you see on this map that drop a Garthium when you break their armor. So we're going to be taking a bit of a detour to break their armor so we can repair the Amir for five more Raging Storm uses later. I also want to point out that um, Eilagar just promoted to a worse class, so we're just reclassing her back to wife and not a rider straight away. Because yeah. uh, yeah. we still she, need to fly. She kind of became an armored five move unit. We're just going to put her back on a flying seven move class. I see. Yeah. We definitely enjoy our flyers in um, Free House's speed runs. Yeah, the main, there, so there's a few things that can go wrong in this map. Um, Byleth can miss her gambit, which is going to be kind of bad. Um, Byleth can also die to some dark mages in the middle of the map, which is kind of scary, because they also have a pretty significant crit rate on her. Um, and that, there's a few ways that Edelgard can also die in this map. There, there's a lot of that, that goes on. Yeah. So, um, the biggest yeah. problem is probably missing the gambit on the robot, though, because there's, no, uh, there's not much you can do in terms of RNs. To um, fix that. Unless I'm not thinking of something, but yeah. Uh, there is stuff you can do, it's just slow. Yeah, yeah like, no matter what, it's going to be really slow, whatever you do. So you're just hoping for the best. I'm good. What's my strategy? Okay, she had her first gambit. That's always good. Yeah, I'm at 39.22. Uh, 40-23 now, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah, like that's what you need for the final boss. Yeah. Come on, get some strength and speed. Some strength is good. Edelgard's speed growth is not fantastic, so that's a little bit iffy. I'm awake. We also got a really useful weapon called the Axe of Zoltom, which is really powerful and effective on armored units, such as this boss here. Okay, oh. time for one of the hardest bosses in the game. Felix. You mean the age shield? Let's make this quick. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, that okay, it activates pretty him. often. Oh, nice. I got him first try. This this is getting really close now. <laughs> Sorry, Linar. Oh, 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 no. My oh. Linar has three warp range. Oh, God, that's going to cost so much time. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's, Meanwhile, Kara's got range. five. Uh, your Linar stole my <laughs> Linar's magic. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I missed. That's fantastic. 
Um, oh, that's what I was pointing out before. Oh, okay. no. I did not miss. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, yeah, I remember had to, having to do that once. Okay, now time for Samir's moment of truth. Let's clean up. Yeah, that, that, that was a 92% um, chance to hit a gambit, and I missed it. What's the plan? So, hey, it happens. All right. Okay, chapter done. I'm at 43 strength. My Edelgard's at 1 HP, and she died. Oh, oh no. no. Uh, 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 I have, uh, she, she didn't. She missed Ingrid. Oh. Yeah. But I brave axed her, so it's good. Yeah, I had that happen last night too. And that was super annoying. <laughs> yeah, and Kirby's gonna suffer even more time loss because of um, the Linhart free rate, free warp range, which is really yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, I had to make him a bishop, which is gonna cost about 13, 14 seconds. Yeah, that's super unfortunate. But eh. That's how it goes sometimes. Although yeah. this next map can be a bit of a doozy as well. Fortunately, it's less of a doozy than it used to be. But yes. oh god, <laughs> still. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, that, that was a good opportunity to catch up, and then I missed a gambit. So unfortunate. Uh, one more donation. Uh, yeah. All right, I would love to. Genshin donates $200 and says, This SGDQ has been amazing, and my sleep schedule is completely in shambles. Thanks for an amazing event and all the good that you do. Now, yes, okay, we can turn one more real quick. Mm-hmm. E.R. Hugh donates $1,725 and says, Cat, 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 cat. Agree. Yes. Cat. Got time for one more? Uh, not really, no. Okay. Yeah, this map is a doozy, so there's a lot to explain, because this is another <laughs> Defeat All Commanders map. And there is a magic user who has Bolting, and Bolting is a 10-range magic spell with high crit. And she can just snipe any of your units and kill them, which is really bad on turn one. But screw that, we're just going to kill the Grammarie instead. <laughs> yeah. The strat I came up with uh, recently and such a nice change. You, you know what the best part is? Like, after you came up with the strat, we both timed it to be like, two or three seconds faster, and it's like, yes, our timing is accurate. <laughs> so it feels good when the timing is consistent. Yeah, the Emir will break after being the uh, Grimory, but um, we do have the means to repair it, fortunately. Speed. Cool. Let's make this. Uh, I saw a 19 speed. That's pretty scary. Still a 19 speed. Mm. Oh no. I didn't go for the backup speed wing because I knew that I would def very much lose the race if I did that. So 20 speed. There we go. Yeah, still three more speed that Kirby needs to gain there. Okay. Please don't die, Violet. Linhart died. I must that doesn't matter. That's normal, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, yeah, that's totally fine that it happened. It's just sad, you know? Ah. Uh, oh, that's a this mismenu. This isn't looking good on Clarissa's end. Okay. Yeah, so she needs to um, change what happened, so she needs to um, attack with someone else. Hopefully Mercedes isn't... Oh. So Mercedes is one... It's really annoying in this map because she has a skill for Miracle, so if okay. she gets hit by a... Um, 
if she gets hit by a fatal move, uh, she'll survive on one HP, depending on her luck set. And sometimes she activates it, and uh, it's it's very annoying. Yeah. Okay, I got everything first try. Cool. I just killed Dimitri. I did not. So. <laughs> All right. Um, that makes us both runners, I guess, on the final map. Uh, yeah. So this route is shorter than the rest of them. So. Um, yeah, because Aelgard actually gets things done. She finishes in April, while the rest of the routes finish. <laughs> 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 Yeah, this is the last map in the run. Um, we're yeah. gonna, we got some Agarthium, so we're actually going to repair the Amir just for this map. And we're going to use up all five Raging Storm uses on this map alone. Um, I think this map will speak for itself. Yes. Right <laughs> <laughs> um, also, but, yeah. I should uh, bring up that uh, time is when, um, after the mission complete thing, when, um, when the screen turns black before the cutscene plays, the end yeah, of the cutscene. Yeah, right. Scene. So that'll be Claris's call when to fade out, probably. Yeah, or, yeah on the fade out. We'll see. Well, it depends yeah. on your speed, because... Uh... Yeah, it depends on my speed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I really, yeah, we'll see how that works. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah. My Kirby's strength isn't fantastic is, either. Uh, super iffy. Which is unfortunate. But hey, I mean, that's the nature of Fire Emblem sometimes. Yep, so that stride 5 action move. And <laughs> Raging Storm on the Pegasus and I, and that should yeah, explain what we're going to do to this boss. Um, this boss has like a lot of HP bars, and um, because uh, she's a monster, and uh, Clarice can dismount because she has enough speed that would allow her to dismount, and that prevents some um, extra movement. Yeah, uh, and, you'd, and you'd have to manually, animation. yeah, you'd have to manually, uh, like stop her, uh, like. Oh no, attack. okay, that crit is actually really helpful if, if I don't get speed. My oh my god, please end the turn. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to end turns. Okay, and almost there. Time! GG. <gasps> oh, she didn't kill. Mm. Yeah, that was almost time right there. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. When humanity stands strong and people reach out for each other, there's no need for gods. Mm. That's mm. a very good time. Mm. Uh, no. Yeah, I I just run away on like the time. Discern, yeah. I attack and then run away. Okay, let's run. I'm not that oh. far away. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, she got rattled. Wait. <laughs> All right. You can just try to fly away this way. Yeah. What happens? Hopefully she doesn't get caught on fire, but we'll see. Okay, come on, dodge. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, this is what happens if Elogar got speed screwed. Oh. Yeah, it happens to me okay, all the I think time. My best Don't worry bet if you want is to retain experience and backtrack. So like I think if it weren't for that, I think I was like five or six seconds behind you. Yeah. Because I was just because right right when you said time I was about to attack Elogard, but you know, that's how it that happens sometimes. Yeah. GG though. GG. Yeah, I think if uh, Kirby gets lucky on level, levels up, it's um, not too hard to complete the run. But it's just like. But so a nice perk about normal mode, you get to keep experience when you retreat. Oh, yes, that's that's another thing I didn't think of. <laughs> so that's really nice, because I just kept those speed levels I just got. Or rather, the one speed level I got out of like five. Yeah, that's unfortunate. What's the point? Doesn't she have like a 40% speed growth? It's 40%, yeah. I think as a Wyvern Rider, Wyvern Rider doesn't get more speed, so yeah, I think it's 40%. So it's... Yeah. Well, this is on normal difficulty because it's fast, and even on normal, pretty unreliable at times. Mm. Okay, come on, get some speed. We need one more speed point. That's Please. not speed. <laughs> That's not speed. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay, okay, that worked. 
That works, I guess. Oh, she, she's at 45 strength. That works. She's at 45 strength. That works. Because oh. <laughs> you need 23 speed normally, but that's with 40 strength. If you have 45 strength, you lose one less speed from weapon weights. Okay, time is coming up soon. Time. GG. GG. <laughs> Those were two very good runs, so it's like, yeah, they, they were very good runs. Kittymon failed to beat, what was your name again? Mobileth? Bad, but it's okay. Kittymon will come back with revenge for revenge. Depends <laughs> we could get more people in on this, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so yeah. yeah, this race was pretty awesome. I'm, I'm glad we both got to show off this route. And, like, I am so no. glad we got to show off this route. Yeah, this route, it, it's short, but it's just so... And Raging Storm, it is so fun. And like, that's the beauty of speedrunning this game. It's like, there are four different routes, but like, every route has like, a really different set of tools to just completely break part two. Yeah. Which is really fun. Like, Blue Lions, for example, they have an ability you make four units move again. <laughs> yes, you heard me correctly. You can let another four units move again. <laughs> so if you want to see that, then next time this ever comes into EQ, donate for Blue Lions. <laughs> but, also for the uh, Weird Chapter 6 strat as well, because that yeah. strat is so great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, at least I'll go ahead and start with some few shoutouts. I definitely want to give a shout out to um, for everyone who donated to make this a thing in the first place. Like. Again, holy crap, we've raised like sixty, seventy thousand dollars for this bid war between the Black Eagles and Golden Deer. Um, and that's amazing. Um, I want to give a shout out to the Fire Emblem speedrunning community. You can find our Discord on the speedrun.com page for Three Houses, and there's a lot of cool people there. I feel like if I start naming names, I'll probably forget someone, but the name I do want to call out is Tasmania Jones, who came up with all these crazy strats recently. Um, and it's also just proof that you can pick up this game in speedrun without any experience because he has He had no experience with, with speedrunning and actually took the Blue Lions world record for a time and contributed so much to the run and That's just an example of a real-life runner who started from nothing and just was able to pick this up Like you don't need to be really good at the game. You can anyone can pick it up It doesn't matter how bad you are. All it does is take time. Yeah Yeah, time um, and, and I, um... yeah. A lot of practice and understanding. I mean, it took me a lot of um, practice and understanding to get um, the Golden Deer World Record um, mm -hmm. all the time. So, yeah. Oh yeah, Gold Golden Deer World Record. I got a I got the Golden Deer World Record today offline. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> I was like so be... stressed about this. Because, yeah. So I was like, okay, let's just do a practice run. Oh, I got the Rudder went Golden Deer World Record off stream. Sweet. <laughs> Yeah, it would be awkward if um, I still held the world record though and Golden Deer did win, but that's, thank goodness that didn't happen, both of those cases, so, yeah. But, yeah, um, are there any other shout outs you both would like to give out? Shout out to Lucia and Corin, they're great. Shout outs to Evie, shout outs to Kirby, shout outs to all the Amiibos. Um, yeah. um, shout outs got... to the French community. Yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I got. Um, Shout out to everyone well. who donated for the spit war because wow, did so many people donate to the spit mm. war. Yeah, like, it's, it's insane. Holy crap! Yes, um, I've got. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna do like a uh, run of this next week um, <laughs> on Aussie speed runs. So that's gonna be fun to do. Getting a speed screwed Elgar again. Oh my god! Just like <laughs> what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess if you want to see more farm speed runs um, and from, I guess, different people, um, yeah, that that's happening next week on um, Australian speed runs as well. So uh, many of us, uh, some of us has like marathon runs and all that. And um, yeah, they're, they're pretty fun. Um, and and shout outs to the GDQ tech crew, <laughs> like putting this together um, and also like helping us get it set up pretty smoothly because and everyone who organized this event in the first place. Like, this event, this event is amazing. And yeah. I'm always glad to run any games for these events for a good cause and showcase them. Like, these are honestly some of my best experiences in my life, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Same. And shout out to Claris, who was willing to do D-Rust for four different routes <laughs> alongside me, because I, I messaged her and I was like, 
hey, what, do you want to offer a bit war as a race? Sure, okay, we had to de-rust four runs. And Claris also had Pikmin 3 to, de <laughs> to work on yeah. before this, so. That's basically okay. five well, different games. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. five different <laughs> games, not stressful. It's over now. So. <laughs> I get to relax. <laughs> but I feel like if I keep going, I'll never stop. There's just too many people to shout out overall, um, too many awesome communities, but... I think that's it. That's Fire Emblem Three Houses. Um, if this gets in another GDQ ever again, then donate for Blue Lions if you want to see really broken tools. Lions. And if you want to see Dudu use magic, because yes, that is actually a thing. Dudu uses magic in the Blue Lions speedrun. Yeah, so... <laughs> Heal the Dudu for the win. Well, my jaw is on the floor yet again. What a fantastic race from Claris and Kirby Master. Let's get to a couple donations real quick. S Guy donates $100 with a comment. Good morning, SGDQ from Germany. Still, still have a sleep here, but have some money for a good cause during an amazing game. C.A. Kirby donates $250 and says, I recently rediscovered Fire Emblem and forgot how much I love this series. Can't wait to see three houses get destroyed by two awesome runners. Good luck to both runners. Though, as my name is also Kirby, I'll have to root for Masta. This event has been amazing. Thank you to all runners, staff, and crew. And with that, let's, we'll be back in just a moment, right after this.
Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2021 Online, powered by Twitch. Let's get to a few more of these donations. Pack One Kenobi donates $100 and says, Totally hyped to see Billy Jr. 82 on the Bishy Bashy. Yet another arcade game he totally owns me on. I'm a Squirrel donates $25 and says, Come on, let's get that Bishy Bashy 100%. It's such a fun game to play with friends at arcades. And looking at that incentive, we are currently sitting at $14,400 out of $20,000, which means we are five and a half thousand just about away from getting that upgrade. Let's make this happen, chat. You got you folks have been crushing it all night long. I want to keep that momentum going. Let's get some trains going. $5, $10, $25, whatever you've got, I want to see it. Alrighty, and looks like I'm getting word that we are ready to go to tonight's daily recap. So, without further ado, take it away, Feasel. Kung Fu and YKB. Well, thank you very much. Hello, good evening, everyone. You're watching Summer Games Done Quick Online 2021. Hope you're all doing amazing. The runs today have been fantastic, and I am joined by Fiesel and Yellow Killer B. What's up, you two? Hi. Oh, how are you doing? Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually going to be our final recap of the week because we are heading into the last day of the marathon. That's always, oh my gosh, it always just surprises me. It just, yeah. it, I think it hits me all at once. Like, how did we get here so quickly? Yeah, it it's went so by, by like Sunday was like two seconds ago and now yeah. here we are. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, I, yeah, just the other, I feel like it was like a couple hours ago. I was like, oh, it's still Wednesday. Like, yeah. <laughs> So much time. <laughs> yeah, it's so strange. So anyway, we wanted to go over like 10 of the clips that we thought would be awesome to share with you all that, that we thought were really cool. Um, so we're going to go over some clips and uh, show you some runs that maybe you caught and loved and want to see again, or maybe you missed. And you should definitely go back and see among all of the runs that you should watch all of. Um, so we are going to go ahead and start. Um, I'll take the first one. Uh, so... Um, whatever I can see. Yeah, let's go. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we're going to start with, um, recently we saw the Breath of the Wild run. I was talking with Johnny Boomer earlier this evening, and he did a fantastic All Dungeons run. Uh, so we have some really great, super smooth examples of bullet time bouncing. Mm -hmm. Um, so whenever we can get that clip up, uh, <laughs> uh well, Johnny did it. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about bullet time bouncing is it wasn't it kind of a later trick that got introduced? Um, like yes. as far as like when Breath of the Wild came out, you know, there was a lot of like riding on trees around and stuff like that. And like bullet time bouncing didn't really come into play until a little bit later in like the speed runs, you know, right. life, which was interesting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we had, um, uh, yeah, there was like bomb bouncing and there were, you know, and there was like stasis launching. Um, but here's a really good example of the uh, bullet time bounce happening. Um, uh, this is, I'm sure it'll start over in a second, but this is, uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> so this is Johnny getting ready to set up with um, this enemy here. Uh, he used this sound to um, encourage them to come over in the right area. And then I feel like every time I would look over and see him do a bullet time bounce, it was so smooth. And he always... It's just like his direction with this is perfect. I mean, this is a great example of why he has all the records he does in this game now because he's been, you can tell he's been putting in the time and effort. So uh, he's currently, the game is loading to try to keep up with him as he makes his way over to um, the Goron City. Uh, so it's like basically as close as you're going to get because you have to go around the mountains a little bit, but it was a very, very smooth bullet time launch. So um, great job with him. He was... Uh, I wouldn't, I don't think it was like super close to world record, but it was like very, very, very solid marathon run. It was really good. 
Yeah, and that's a hard trick. Like when you see people run that game, you see them usually have to try those over and over again, you know, to try to get the perfect angle or the right amount of height. So that's very, very impressive. Uh, So my first clip is actually from Black Mesa. And, you know, talking about momentum, you know, this game is all about, you know, finding that momentum, keeping that momentum. He's going to skip a mini boss here and he just gets massive amounts of speed and gets it on the very first try running oh. around the, the canyon yep. here and, and uh, you know, jumping back into the loading zone. And so, I mean, this is a game where you have to be on top of things like this. The speed is intense. And so the fact that he was able to nail this very difficult trick on the very first try is 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 extremely impressive. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any any of this kind of movement is always really impressive to see. But Fiesel, I know you had something you wanted to talk about. All right. Yes, I do. All right. My <laughs> next clip that I want to talk about is Mega Man 2 Game Boy. We had a race today. And here on the left, we see KLM having an amazing run. This is the final stage. And here's a series of three zips, um, frame perfect tricks, three frame perfect tricks in a row here. The potential to soft lock the game, but KLM nails it and just has, I think, really a fantastic run for a marathon. I mean, let alone just race here. It's fantastic. Yeah. So take a look I at this. Absolutely with agree. Yeah. Yeah, I know that I feel like races is something that you like to talk about and you like yeah, to focus on. That's my favorite people. thing for whatever reason. Um, yeah. So I always like to see, I mean, I like to see everyone have a great race, but I, I really love it when people are, like get to the end and they have the lead and it's like, well, I could try this risky trick and maybe blow it. I don't have to do this trick, but I'm going to. And yeah, um, yeah it's just great to see that in a, in a marathon race. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. I mean, we just had the Fire Emblem run and they were super close. It was a very close race. So, I mean, there's been a lot of really great races all week. Uh, now I'm going to take it into um, actually <laughs> something that was late last night. It was a little bit of a, I want to be the knight in shining armor. This is um, Keizo Stair's uh, second run of the marathon. And he <laughs> it was opened by making the same noise that they did for racing pitch. And I thought it was really funny. Um, but this is just some really, really well done uh, platforming here. There's a lot of like, like using and, and um, taking advantage of the items you get and then doing like new runs. But if you like hold the right key, you can kind of like save those upgrades. So just starting back from that intro screen, uh, they were able to just um, just move forward into new sections of the game that you weren't expecting. So this is just like clean movement, good platforming, like solid skill happening right here. Yeah, I caught Definitely. this one. I thought this was a really fun run. And I didn't know anything about yeah. it going in, but it was it was really enjoyable to watch, even just, yeah. you know, for a noob like me. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> just goes to show that uh, being skilled at making car noises is helpful for more than just speed running. So, right. I mean, it can be used in so many areas of your life. Uh, all right, my next clip is from Timeline. This was a very silly game from earlier today. Basically, what he's doing here is he's doing a save and load hover. And so if he uh, and he is going to try it again here because he didn't quite hit it fast enough. But you can see by saving and loading, he just basically flies up the side of the castle. And then uh, just a couple seconds later, you find another use for uh, saving. He's going to show an example where he doesn't save. He gets captured by the guards. But apparently if he just saves fast enough, the guards don't even know he's there. So (laughs) throughout this run, uh, you know, finding new and, uh, you know, creative uses for the save and quick load uh, is always a lot of fun to see. Yeah, I think I missed that one, but I definitely need to go back and catch that. (laughs) There was a couple really good clips from that one. It was hard to, it was actually hard to choose. So um, yeah, it was, it was a good run. Yeah, great choice. What about you, Fiesel? Okay, my next uh, clip that I want to talk about here, this is from Halo 2. So today we had a run of Halo 2, and Monopoly had a bit of a magic trick to show off. So what you can do, uh, it's a little hard to see here, but what's going on is you can turn yourself into a phantom. So the game tries to respawn you as a Spartan, which actually respawns you as a phantom. And the phantom is totally invincible, which allows you to survive in the out-of-bounds void, and then move right on into the tunnels, which skips a section of the game. Um, So you can basically check out... Uh, you can check out this run for all kinds of tricks like this. I mean, this is a real trick-filled run. Great explanations from the runner as well, which I think always makes a game like this much more fun to watch. Oh, yeah. The whole yeah. co-op element of that yeah. run was, like, confusing but amazing right. <laughs> all yeah. at the same time. Like, yeah. I watched it, and I still don't understand what was going on, but I was still, like, mind-blown by everything mm-hmm. that he was doing. 
Yeah, exactly. I agree. Plus, uh, just just super thrilled to know that it was one of the bonus games that was included mm -hmm. um, because we got to see such good skill and like great commentary. Uh, speaking of incentives and bonus games, we are over 16,000 so far hey. for the Ishibashi upgrade to 100%. And that's next, you all. So we have a few more clips to go over and things to talk about. So it gives you a little time, you know, if you want to get that Vishibashi, um all levels or all stages up to 100%. I think you do. I think we all want to see that. We all do. There's we still all time. do. <laughs> get those donations in. You can win some really amazing prizes. And uh, I'm going to keep track of the tracker for the rest of this segment, just so you all know. So let's make it happen, okay? Um, oh, also, I'll go into the next clip, actually. I also spoke with Ajikin today, who did the Dance Rush, Dance Rush, which is surprisingly hard to say, Stardom Showcase. And this was so much fun. I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of people with some really, really amazing energy this week. But man, did he bring the energy. He brought the energy, the hype, even had the crowd. Everything about this was so much fun. So fun to watch. You can see his dance background uh, coming to play here. This is some of his more complicated footwork. Um, just see him kind of like shuffling back and forth. I thought this was, it was wild. Like, this is so much fun. Yeah, there were two things that really impressed me about this. One of them is he's playing a dance video game, but he looks really cool and like he's actually yes. dancing, right. which I do not. Like you catch me playing DDR, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then right. uh, the other thing is at the uh, during the the um the segment, he had like a bunch of people come and dance with. Like there was this section where like community Ooh. dance was happening, okay. which you guys have to see. It was like the yeah. most wholesome thing that oh, I fun. thought I've seen all day. So. Yeah, a, cu a couple things to look for if you go back and catch that run. I agree. Wholesome is like the perfect word to use for that. <laughs> but that's not all we had today. What's uh, So what's up next? Uh, so next is Mai Mai uh, going, uh, oh, okay. going back go. to the rhythm uh, yep. game Never section. Kidding. This was <laughs> so impressive. I mean... I it's you got to go back and listen to their sound because it's just like click, 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 click. Yeah. like he is hitting those buttons like faster than your eye can even track his hands. And the impressive thing is like he was getting like full combos, you know, triple S, like you know, hundred and some percent. Like he wasn't only completing these levels, but he's like doing it at like a high skill level where he's actually getting a great score as well. It's just mind blowing to to watch this happened it's it's great it's wonderful <laughs> yeah i love these games with the physical component you know the athleticism that it takes i mean even if it's just moving your hands your hands hold your hand try holding your hands up for like just five minutes and not even move it i mean it's still that's tricky imagine just like having to, to flail around to do all that for for the duration of the run i mean you got to have some great upper body strength yeah exactly even just looking at it, you're like your brain just stops functioning for a while yeah. like learning yeah. to, to read at that speed for sure yeah, I know mine does. And you notice he's wearing gloves, and that's just because, you know, it can be even harder on your right. hands. So it definitely yeah. has, like you said, Fiesel, that physical yeah. element that a lot of other games don't necessarily have. Right. Yeah, all right, Fiesel, what else do you have to show us? This okay. Evening? Well, speaking of physical element here, well, we have Half-Life Opposing Force. <laughs> so this this game, uh, there's so many ways to go fast. We we're kind of talking about earlier about it's all about trying to get the speed. I had a hard time deciding which object boost I wanted to show you all. So here's one with a chair. Um, so basically, you can use um, these objects to boost and gain speed. In this case, we're using a chair to boost our way. Wait, is this the wrong clip? Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's the, there's the chair. And oh, chair's on the other side of the wall. But you know what? Never mind. We're going to shoot right up the elevator. Boom. <laughs> so I don't even know how that works. You put the chair on the other side of the wall, and, and suddenly you're up at the top of the elevator. But yeah, basically, you can skip to any place in this run, and you're going to find some, some trick like that, either gaining a lot of speed or um, skipping a trigger. I mean, it's the entire run. I don't know how this game even holds together. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's like yeah. there's a lot of moments in it where you just, you're looking around and you're like, okay, I don't even know what just happened. Right. Uh, what, which, what? <laughs> it's very similar to my last clip that I want to share, which was the Sonic Heroes task. Um, now, this is always, it's always fun to watch any task run, task block that's included in a GDQ because a lot of it's like, whoa, wait, what's going on? So this is just a really fun example of, oh, we're going to fight Team Rose. Oh, okay, we're done fighting Team Rose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the moments that happen in this, like the launches or like um, even on the GDQ Twitter, that was like a great clip earlier that you can also watch of just Tails like, leave it to me, leave it to me, like over and over. Um, it's just, 
the things that you can't do in RTA that you can do in TAS is just incredible. So being able to watch that in any task block is always super fun. It's super worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, they say blink and you miss it. Well, literally, that's that clip because I, mean, the, I think the whole boss fight takes less than a second. Like, it's over it's so yes. quickly that you can't even track it unless it's like, oh, what is, what is even going on here? Exactly, exactly. Um, so before we let you all go, just a reminder, again, Pishy Bashi, upgrade to 100%. Let's get it. We should push for that 1.5 mil. What do you two think about that? I think that'd be great. Mm, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I was going for 99% Pishy Bashi, but now I think you talked me into 100%. I yeah, think, I think that's good. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Checking the tracker. So far, what we are at over sixteen and a half thousand dollars out of that twenty thousand. Only a couple thousand away. I know we can do it. I know we can do it. Um. So speaking of bishy bashi and things coming up next, what are you two looking forward to tomorrow? What about you, Fizel? Oh, me. I'd say easily, hands down, it's going to be the Super Metroid one hundred percent race. Um, one hundred percent. All all the items in the game: oats and goats, behemoth, and shiny zenny. Um, I mean, really, it could be anyone's game here because these are all, you know, three of the best runners, three of the best runners for this game. And this category is really one of my favorite just because you get to see everything and there's just so much opportunity to gain time or lose time. And, you know, it's a race. So even though it's 100%, maybe someone could die. There's always that risk. So, yeah, I don't know. That's you never fair. know what's going to happen. And again, I'm telling you, Fiesel, you and races, I understand. Yeah, I understand it's my the. Favorite the thing. The hype, right? Yeah. yeah, I totally get the hype. Yeah, it should be an awesome race. What about you, YKB? Uh, well, I think this should be no surprise to anyone who knows me, but Quackshot is back in the marathon tomorrow morning, and I am so excited. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Genesis games, and this game in particular, it's beautiful. It's got great music. It's got great movement. And I mean, I'm just, I'm just really looking forward to seeing this run again, and there's like tons of new tech uh, since I ran this game almost five years ago. I think it was five years ago, actually. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to to seeing how it turns out. But there's actually uh, a couple Genesis games in a little block in the morning. So right. a, a lot a to look Yeah, there's a, there's a block of platformers throughout the morning, mm -hmm. but they all look mm -hmm. good, actually. I, you yep. could have picked anything in there, and I would have agreed with you. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So if you're up super late or you wake up early, definitely try to catch some of those games. Now, I know this is something that I'm sure you all are aware of where, you know, it's kind of in prime time, but you can't not mention something about the Mario 64 70 star blindfolded mm -hmm. run because... Yeah. We've got to see like it, it like like a taste of that happen at AGDQ mm -hmm. when did the 16 star. Right. Yeah. Knowing that that's gonna be expanded into 70 star. 70 stars in how much an hour and a half, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just gonna be that's gonna be so wild because like hour and a half is basically what 120 star is without a blindfold. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little more than half of that with blindfolded. I don't know. I just think it's going to be amazing. Bubsy is going to just just make all of her brains explode, but not really. You're going to be fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's so interesting how the blindfolded community has just like grown and grown and what they're able yes. to do. And even in a marathon setting, I mean, it's one thing to do it at home on your stream, maybe in a like segmented setting, but to have that pressure of being like, okay, now you're in a marathon. And, you know, you need to have your backup strats. You need to know what's going on. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting one way or the other, but I, I mean, yeah. I think you're going to absolutely nail it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, this has been awesome. I've loved talking with you all. I will say, I, I just want to be upfront with you all, everyone, is that the interview team, we love each other. And it's so fun to be able to do these daily recaps and hang out with each other and and let you all know the things that we thought were amazing. And just remind you all that all the runs were amazing. You can watch them uh, on YouTube. They get uploaded very quickly. It does mm -hmm. not take a long time. So feel free to please go back and watch all of these amazing runs um, because all the runners deserve credit. They've all done an amazing job. This this week. I can't wait for the runs tomorrow. It's going to be a fantastic final day. There's more runs that we haven't talked about from the week or coming up tomorrow that are also worth a shout out. There's just there's just so much. So please continue to support. Let's hit that 1.5 million and then keep going from there. And let's see if we can get that bishy bashi 100%. I know we only have a couple minutes, but we are over 17,000. Wow. Okay. We, we went up like uh, we went up like almost $1,000 in the last couple of minutes. So you only have like 
25, just over 2,500 left. So definitely, definitely get those donations in for that. Win some amazing prizes. And um, thanks for speaking with us, or thanks for hanging out while we spoke tonight. You know, I think I'm just too excited for Bishi Bashi that I can no longer talk. Maybe I'll leave it with one of you two. What about you? <laughs> I, can't, I can't blame you. I'm excited too. I, I have faith in Twitch chat that they can make this happen. We don't need 99%. We need 100%. We're going to see it. So we believe in you, Twitch chat. Do your thing. Fiesel, any yeah. closing words? <laughs> yeah, I've got to say tomorrow, I think, is going to be the strongest day of the marathon, in, in my yeah. opinion here. I don't know that I'm going to want to sleep at all, given what's coming up next. I agree. This is recurring. No yeah. sleep for the no marathon. Sleep. <laughs> I know. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> All right, all right, so you may see a couple of us tomorrow for a little bit. Otherwise, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend time with you all this week. Thank you so much for joining the interview team here. We'll see you all next time um, or maybe tomorrow. And uh, please enjoy the rest of the marathon. Get Bishy Bashi to 100%. That's Let's right. hit those numbers. So excited. And thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>